Yes, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. In today's video, I want to share with you the latest news involving Bitcoin, involving the Ethereum merge, involving metaverse altcoins, as well as macro crypto news and more. So if you are at an office meeting this week and your boss asks you, hey, what's going on with crypto? You can speak knowledgeably. Like always, check the timestamps down below, hit the like button, and let's jump in, starting with the on-chain metrics currently for Bitcoin. Bitcoin Active Entities, this first chart, is a proxy measurement for the size of the network user base. And right now, the activity metric is currently languishing at the lower end of a multi-year channel, indicating softness in network utilization. So here is that chart from around 2016 to today, 2022, looking at Bitcoin's price history in the black compared to active entities on the network in orange. And what do you see? Well, active entities on chain is lessening. In fact, we're seeing extremely weak on chain activity. Hence, we're in this bear market activity channel. And what this means for you is as an investor, just we've seen this over and over and over again. This is par for the course in Bitcoin terms. And in fact, because we're hitting the lower end of this multi year bear market channel, this shows us that even though it is possible to go lower later, if you believe in the long-term value of an asset, when network activity has been this low, bear market, great time to buy. When activity heightens, that's usually when whales take profit. But again, this is just the natural ebb and flow of any market. And by the way, you could also make the case that network activity is a proxy measure for how much economic activity is happening on a macroeconomic scale. The broader economy is slowing because it is in a recession. So just something to keep in mind as an investor, the minute this metric changes or shifts, I will make a video, I will update you. Now, another metric to keep on the radar is supply on exchanges, Bitcoin supply. And we have checked on this metric in the past. So through all of the volatility since early 2020, Bitcoin supply continues being withdrawn away from exchanges. During downtrends, such as cryptos 2022, it is familiar to see long-term hodlers making up a greater percentage of the overall supply held. So here is this chart. Right around here is the beginning of 2020. This is where we are today, 2022. And as you can see, this blue metric in the back is supply being held on exchanges for Bitcoin. This is obviously Bitcoin's price during that time. And you'll notice. Bitcoin supply on exchanges has dropped by over 40% since topping on Black Thursday, which was March of 2020. So at the start of 2020, this was the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges. And obviously, as supply went down, price went up for the next two years. And it's interesting because where we are today, supply on exchanges is even lower. The total supply of Bitcoin on exchanges is down to just 1.74 million for the first time since November 2018. How this affects you, just know that right around here was the Bitcoin halving, meaning the supply faucet of Bitcoin being mined into existence got cut in half. So this makes sense. But also the price of any asset is just supply and demand. So if we're seeing this lack of supply, it tells us one, that demand may be waning compared to last year. Makes sense. We are in a recession. But two, something's got to give eventually. And when that happens, that will be a pop. Next up, what's happening globally with crypto? Well, FIFA launches an NFT platform on Algorand in the run-up to the World Cup. Here are the details. The platform, called FIFA Plus Collect, is set to launch later this month and will feature affordable, inclusive, and accessible NFTs that depict notable soccer moments, art, and imagery. And also, whatever notable events happen at the World Cup, they will be turned into NFTs on Algorand 2. As the World Cup, set to take place in Qatar in late November, unfolds, moments from the marquee global soccer tournament may also be converted into digital collectibles on Algo. In a direct quote from FIFA on why they chose to launch their own NFT platform on Algorand, they say, Just like sports memorabilia and stickers, this is an accessible opportunity for fans around the world to engage with their favorite players, moments, and more on new platforms. So basically, FIFA likes selling merch, and they say, hey, we'll sell you our merch in the analog world as well as this new Web3 digital world too. And moving forward, what's happening with the metaverse? 
The Sandbox launches their alpha season three with 90 metaverse experiences. So we know the Sandbox to be the metaverse that offers these Lego-like virtual worlds. And with this new season, they're offering 90 different experiences with over 100 hours of new gameplay available for its new season. And what sort of usership and growth is this expected to bring to Sandbox? Well, according to their CEO, COO, he said, the Sandbox now has 4 million users who have used its wallets, up from just 2 million back in March when the company unveiled their Alpha Season 2. He also noted the virtual real estate land ownership continues to grow, and the experiences show that owners such as brands are making use of the land. About 22,000 people have paid good money for land in the virtual space. So he does say that the growth is there, but it's really mainly the brands and corporations that are the ones actually building on the land. While the sandbox is still under development, the alpha launches show how owners and players are developing their properties as if they were all making rides in a theme park. The 10 week seasons are a way that the sandbox can show players what to expect over time. And the company does expect season three to surpass its previous record of 350,000 active users. Now that number is very different from daily active users, although still a great number. And if they did that, I mean, that'd be awesome because we are in such a bear market and the metaverse hype of 2021 has now died down significantly compared to what it once was. So cool to see the building. I'll keep you updated. Next piece of news for Celsius. Cell climbs 50% as the Celsius network aims to return $50 million to clients. So in other words, another way to say that would be Celsius files to reopen withdrawals for a minority of customers. If you had your money in Celsius, are you one of those customers? Let's find out. Beleaguered crypto lender Celsius has filed a motion with the United States Bankruptcy Court to allow customers with digital assets held in certain accounts to be withdrawn. There's a catch, however, as the motion only applies to custody and withhold accounts and for custodied assets worth $7,575 or less in value. So this only applies to a small minority of their customers. And basically when they say custody and withhold accounts, that essentially means people just keeping their crypto in their wallet to hold and not the people actually using Celsius for lending and borrowing. So again, a very small amount. Celsius has structured their custody and withhold accounts, which essentially serve as storage wallets in a way that still enable users to maintain legal ownership of their crypto. So if that was you, you get your money potentially, but this ownership, however, does not extend to assets held in accounts that offered annual crypto earnings or borrowing services that are earned in borrow accounts. And essentially, I would assume that was over 95% of their user base. And the final thing I'll say on this, only $50 million they're giving back out of the $210 million held by over 58,000 users and their custody accounts is set to be released. So a very small minority, but it's something. And next piece of news on the Ethereum merge. Consensus to launch sustainable NFTs celebrating the Ethereum merge. So they'll be releasing a series of green NFTs to usher in the Ethereum upgrade. Now, just as a reminder, Consensus, ran by Joe Lubin, one of the co-founders of Ethereum, one of the main builders, developers for the Ethereum network, that's what Consensus is. And inspired by the merge, Regenesis, this collection, will include various editions of non-fungible tokens of elaborately detailed worlds that embody the benefit of the merge, sustainability, security, and scalability. So this is artwork, and Consensus partnered with artist Chris Skinner and animation firm Keith City Group to design the collection. So something to commemorate this historic event, and this is open to anybody, this is free, you can claim an NFT if you get there quick enough. These limited edition NFTs will be free to mint on the day of the merge, which has been slated for sometime between September 10th and 16th. The NFTs will be available 9 a.m. of that day. Interesting. I'll probably try and get one if I can, if I remember, but if I don't, I hope many people from this audience gets them first. And that's the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow. And by the way, thank you again to Binance for giving us tickets 
to the weekend concert this last weekend at SoFi Stadium. Awesome time. See you tomorrow.